Mm -hmm. yeah. So, hello everyone. It's a real pleasure to uh, announce Mohamedan Ahmedou uh, from Gießen, who is our speaker today. And uh, the title of his talk is A New Blow Up Phenomena for the Nuremberg Problem on Half Spheres. So, enjoy and Mohamedan, please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the organizer for the opportunity to talk in this uh, seminar, and in particular, Philip, <coughs> who invited me to give a talk. So the topic of today is a quite, uh, quite famous problem in geometric analysis. It is a so-called uh, Nuremberg problem. And um, so I will report on some uh, recent results uh, obtained uh, jointly with uh, Mohamed Ben Ayed from the Sfax University. <clears throat> and uh, so let me first explain uh, the, the main problem, the Nuremberg problem. Most of you already uh, know about this problem, maybe have already worked on this problem. So this is, um, everything started with the equation which, uh, uh, which was uh, raised by Elvis Nuremberg in the academic year 1969-1970. And uh, Nuremberg asked his student, but also the mathematical community. <coughs> so uh, given a function on the sphere, so you, you, you take the sphere with its standard metric, and then uh, you have also a function on this, on this uh, <coughs> sphere. Then you ask, is it possible to find a conformal metric uh, in the conformal class of the standard metric, such that in the case of S2, the Gauss curvature is uh, given uh, pointwise by the function k. And in the case where the <laughs> dimension is uh, bigger than or equal to three, that the uh, scalar curvature is uh, given exactly by the function. And this problem has a very nice, uh, this problem has a very nice uh, geometric uh, PDs as a PD's formulation, <clears throat> because if you remember, so let's first start with the case of the two sphere. So remember that if you take a metric, a conformal metric to the standard metric, and you write the conformal factor as exponential at the power of two U, then the transformation laws of the Gauss curvature and the conformal change of the metric tells you that actually this conformal factor U should satisfy the following uh, PD, namely minus Laplace of U plus the Gauss curvature of the background metric equal to the Gauss curvature of the new metric exp uh, times exponential to U. <clears throat> and so now you can reformulate the Nuremberg problems and ask, is it possible to find a solution of this following nonlinear uh, PD with exponential linearity? namely minus Laplace of U plus one. So this is the Gauss curvature of the sphere equal to K exponential to U. And now in the high dimension, uh, you have also uh, something similar. So namely in this case here, <coughs> you, you uh, choose your uh, conformal metric to be equal to U at the power of four divided by N minus two times the background metric. And then the, transformation law of the scalar curvature and the conformal change of the metric tells you that the conformal factor U should satisfy the following equation, namely minus Laplace uh, U plus a constant CN times the scalar curvature of the background metric times U equal to R, the scalar curvature of the new metric times U at the power of N plus two over N minus two. And then you can rephrase the equation of Nuremberg and ask, is it possible always <coughs> to find the solution of the following uh, uh, nonlinear PD minus Laplace of U plus N times N minus two divided by four times U equal to K U at the power of N plus two divided, divided by N minus two. <coughs> and of course you ask U to be positive because otherwise you wouldn't have, you would not have a metric. So this equation here is, this is a, a nonlinear semi-linear uh, equation, but uh, the problem is uh, with uh, this uh, nonlinearity. The nonlinearity is critical <coughs> because uh, 
n plus 2 divided by n divided by n minus 2 plus 1. This is equal to 2n over n minus 2. This is the sober of critical exponent. So, and because of this critical exponent, you have that the corresponding Euler Lagrange functional does not satisfy the palace mill condition. And this means that standard metric of calculus of variation cannot be applied. From other, from uh, Another part, you see that actually this exponent is a borderline. So if you lower this exponent a little bit, so you recover compactness and you recover existence. And one way to overcome this difficulty is to start first by a subcritical approximation. So you take a, a epsilon, a small parameter, and you consider the following subcritical approximation, namely minus Laplace of u, plus n times n minus two divided by four times u equal to uh, k. Now at the power of u, u at the power of n plus two divided by n minus two minus epsilon. And then you, you recover compactness and you can prove the existence of solution. And then now what you, the second step is to say, okay, I will now let epsilon go to zero. And uh, is it possible to uh, recover a solution of my original problem. <laughs> then you are you, you want to uh, understand the behavior of this epsilon, the conversions of this sequence of u up your epsilon, and then uh, if you uh, use the elliptic estimates, then you see that actually there are two alternatives. So either the infinity norm of u epsilon is uniformly bounded, and in this case. Elliptic estimate tells you that you are bound in all spaces, and then uh, actually that you can uh, you will converge in the C two alpha topology to uh, a function, and this function will solve the Nuremberg problem. So this is the, the the good case. The other case is that there is a blow up in the infinity norm, which means that there exists a point on the sphere such that u epsilon as a point x epsilon, so that u epsilon uh, applied to x epsilon will go to plus infinity. So <clears throat> now, uh, so you have uh, to understand this, uh, the lack of compactness and uh, in, this, uh, in this framework, so you have the so-called constatation compactness principle, which allows you to understand what happens to this u epsilon. And so this is a um, work of uh, Pierre Williams, uh, Michel Struve, Jean-Michel uh, Jean -Michel Coron, Heim Brésis, among others. And it uh, follows from this method here that if uh, you have blow up, that actually you have some kind of concentration of compactness in the sense that if you multiply the Lebesgue measure with the density u epsilon at the power of two n of n minus two, so this random measure here will converge weakly in the sense of measure to a sum of Dirac masses times some weights alpha i. And uh, more precisely, you have that, uh, that uh, at some point where concentration occurs, this point here, if you integrate <coughs> the norm of your epsilon uh, in L two n over n minus two, this norm here will be uh, lower bounded um, uh, if you uh, let epsilon go to go to zero, so th there is a concentration of, of compactness in this sense. Here. <clears throat> so, and the reason of, of, of this constant of compactness is that actually when you make a rescaling, <clears throat> you have a function on R n, and this so this is a profile of the of the blow up, and this function satisfies the following equation minus Laplace of u equal to u <clears throat> at the power of n plus two divided divide by n minus two. And you, of course, you are, ask you to be positive. So this um, <clears throat> equation can be classified and all solution can be parameterized with n plus one parameter. So you have the location, so A, so this is the location of, of the bubble and then the height of the bubble. So this, these are bubbles with uh, a point, the center of the bubble, and you have a height here. This height here uh, can be very, very, uh, very large. <coughs> and um, 
So this kind of, uh, of function here, uh, they have the same kind of, uh, of behavior that the function u epsilon. Namely, if you take delta i lambda at the power of two and over minus two times the Lebesgue measure, you converge weakly in the sense of measure to Sn times the Dirac mass, where Sn here is a, <coughs> is a universal constant and we call it the energy. So, so this, this bubble here, they come with, a, with an energy. And um, so now you, you can uh, do something uh, more refined. And then you try to understand uh, the, the behavior of, of this uh, blow up. And in this uh, respect here, this was uh, initiated by uh, Richard Chern, although the approximation itself is already in the paper of, uh, of Yamabe in, uh, from uh, 1960. <clears throat> but actually, this uh, refined blow up analysis, this goes back to uh, Rickshain. And Rickshain has a, a typology of this, uh, of this um, blow up. So, first, if you have a point where, where, where there is a, a sequence A epsilon, which converge to this point here, a new epsilon of A epsilon goes to plus infinity. So you say that this point here is a blow up point. So you may have many, many sequences, but if you, if, at least if you have one, so you say that this is a blow up point. <clears throat> and so this blow up is called isolated. If you take this blow up point, and uh, so, so if, if they are separated, so if, if uh, in every blow up point, if every, if every two blow up points are um, far from each other, yeah, um, in, in the sense that there is a, a eta, uh, so that the distance is lower bounded by some eta positive. So this, so this means that the, 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 there is no, uh, there, there is no uh, uh, continuity, continuum of, of, uh, of uh, blow up points. But there is another point here because here we, we uh, define it the blow up so that there is a sequence. But what happens is if we have many sequences converging to the same point? And, and, and this is another um, uh, definition, which is called a simple. So if we call it simple, if there is only one, and actually how we uh, can quantify this uh, definition here. So we can look to the, the, to the integral of k u uh, epsilon at the power of two, of two and of n minus two. So if it is uh, <coughs> only the, the energy of one bubble, so you say that it is uh, simple. <laughs> but we will see that, so if it is non-simple, you get at one point, the energy of, of uh, m bubbles, m bigger than equal to two. So now if uh, with this uh, definition, let us uh, come back to the, to the <coughs> Nuremberg problem. <laughs> So this is a, 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 a very long um, story, which starts with uh, Rick Shane and some unpublished uh, notes. And then uh, later developed by Yang Yan Li, by Shen and Lin, by Druyé, uh, Ebe Robert, among others. And usually <coughs> you, um, you assume the following non-degeneracy assumption. You, ass you say that um, at every critical point of K, Laplace of k should not be, should not be equal to zero, and we call it we call it non-degeneracy assumption. So under this non-degeneracy assumption, so you know first that all blow up points should be critical point of k. So this means that the location of the blow up point is known. So every blow up point should be a critical point of k, and also the Laplace of k at this critical point should be strictly negative. So this is in general, but uh, you can be, be more uh, specific if you uh, look to the dimension. For example, if the dimension is two or three, you know that there is only one single blob. So the, if you have a sequence of solution, blob, big solution, the, 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 the U epsilon will blow up only one time. <clears throat> and uh, all these blobs also are simple. Um, and, the, and then, now, if n is bigger than or equal to four, you may have multi, you, 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 ha, you do have actually generically multiple blow up, uh, but they are all isolated. So this, and this is a very long uh, history. So it starts with a paper with Yan Yan Li in 1996, where he proved uh, the situ uh, the, the, this uh, claim for n equal to four. And then for n bigger than or equal to five, he made some flatness condition. So it violates actually this condition here. 
because uh, uh, platinum conditions are not generic conditions. So this, this is generic condition. So this is satisfied for almost every function. And then uh, the, uh, the, the, total, the, the full picture was only recently fully understood in a paper published by uh, Andre Malkiudi and Marty Meyer. The reason for the, the, that for n bigger than or equal to five, the situation is quite complicated because uh, you may have <coughs> the situation that you have uh, the so-called mixed blow up, which means that you have omega, a solution plus a sum of bubbles. And then this makes blow up quite, quite uh, involved and quite uh, complicated. So this is the situation for the, for the um, Nuremberg problem on the spheres. And now my topic today is uh, on a some related uh, problem, <coughs> which is uh, what happens if, you, if we consider a manifold with boundary. So in this case, if you consider the half sphere. So uh, of course, uh, I forgot to say that this problem can also be posed on any uh, manifold. Uh, in particular on compact manifold, but usually uh, the spherical case is the most difficult one because usually if you have some geometry, so this geometry can help you ru to rule out the blow up. But if you are on the sphere, so there is no help coming from the geometry and then, then you have really to understand what happens to, 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 uh, to your uh, blowing up solution. <clears throat> so the, the problem is the following. So if you are on, on, a, on a manifold with boundary, then you have the scalar curvature, but you have also the mean curvature, and you have to prescribe them in a, uh, in a uh, simultaneous way. <clears throat> and one way to, to, to uh, reformulate this kind of problem is to say, okay, I will prescribe um, the scalar curvature to be a function, and then I will assume that the mean curvature is equal to zero. So this is uh, prescribing the scalar curvature <clears throat> under minimal boundary condition. And then uh, you, you look to the uh, transformation uh, of the scalar curvature. So this is what, what, what we have seen, but also there is a, a similar transformation law of the mean curvature under the conformal change of the metric. And you end up with uh, this uh, boundary value problem, minus Laplace of u plus n times n minus two divided by four times u equal to k u at the power of n plus two over n minus two u is positive. So this is very similar to the equation that we had on the sphere, but, but then on the boundary, you have a Neumann boundary condition. <coughs> so um, so th this is also uh, an uncompact uh, problem because also you have all, all, always this uh, Sobel F exponent. And one way to overcome such a difficulty is to lower the exponent by uh, considering first a subcritical sub approximation, namely minus Laplace of u <coughs> plus n times n minus two divided by four times u equal to k u at the power of n plus two divided by n minus two minus epsilon u positive and the normal derivative is equal to zero on the bottom. Then uh, you, now, you can now analyze also the asymptotic behavior of your epsilon using elliptic estimate up to the boundary. And so um, what you find is uh, something very similar to uh, what we have already seen for the uh, closed case, namely there are two possibility is that the infinity norm of your epsilon is uniformly bounded. In this case here, you have a convergence in the C to alpha topology and the limit is the solution of the number of, of the this Nuremberg problem here on, on the half sphere. In the other case, you have a, a blow up. And uh, if you have a blow up, then you can analyze the, the lack of compactness. You can use also constatistic compactness principle. So you get something similar. The only difference is that now you epsilon at the power of two and divide by n minus two times the Lebesgue measure will converge to a sum of Chirac time with some weight. Some of them are sitting in the interior and some of them are on the boundary of the sphere. And then you have a concentration of compact in the sense that the, uh, the norm um, L at the power of two and over minus two will concentrate. So if you integrate on a very shrinking balls, you have always a universe constant which uh, minimize your integral. So this is uh, something similar to what happens in the closed case. The only thing is that now you have a, 
uh, you have points which are in the interior, you have, you have, and you have also points which are on the boundary. <clears throat> okay, so, <laughs> and the, the reason why you, you, you find also this kind of, uh, of concentration of compactness is due to the, to the fact that if you make a rescaling uh, for a point going to the boundary, then you, you get a bubble, but a bubble sitting on the boundary. And the only difference here is that this bubble here will have the half energy of a bubble which is in the in the in the interior. So this is the only difference. Okay, now uh, what about the blow up analysis? So this has been done for low dimension, uh, low dimension have half spheres, and then uh, now you need also an an degeneracy assumption, which is um, somehow similar. For, for, for a critical point, it is the same that the one that you have for the closest case, namely that at every critical point, Laplace should be not, not equal to zero, but then you have the boundary. And on the boundary, you, uh, you have to first consider the restriction of K on the boundary. And then, uh, so you, you, you assume that every critical point of this restriction satisfies that the normal derivative does not vanish. Okay, so and exactly like in the closed case, this is the most difficult situation. So if you assume that it is not satisfied, so then it is easier. So in this case here, uh, something uh, is only denoted for low dimension, uh, namely for uh, S2 plus, this I, I didn't mention here, but this is already known for, for S3 plus and also for uh, S4 plus. <coughs> here, the situation is that uh, here, you cannot rule out, I mean, here there are multiple blow up, even on the, on the this is plus here. This is the, uh, uh, no, 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 this is not plus, I'm sorry, sorry for that. Sorry for that. No, this is, if, if you are in the interior, then uh, what you can prove is that the gradient should be equal to zero and the plus should be uh, strictly negative. And if you are on the boundary, of 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 SN plus, of SN plus, then this is this is a critical point of the uh, uh, such that is, is, this is a point such that the tangential part of the gradient is equal to zero, and the normal part is positive. So this is this is the situation uh, when you have a boundary, and then uh, for n equal to three and four, it has been proved. So uh, there is a paper that I wrote many years ago with. Uh, uh, Jadli and Malkudi, where we proved also, among other things, that on S3, all bubbles, all, uh, you may have multiple bubbles, but they are all, is all isolated and simple. And um, later, Ben Ayad, Goody, and uh, Wildebu proved that uh, something similar also on S4+. Plus. And now, uh, our goal here was to analyze what happens for the high-dimensional half sphere. So we have seen that the, for the case of closed sphere, uh, it took uh, more than 20 years to understand the full picture. And we wanted to, un to, to understand also the same picture in, on, in the, on, the, on the half spheres. So in this situation here, so you start first analyzing what happens for your epsilon. And then a first result <coughs> that you can prove is some kind of, of uh, Struve energy decomposition. So this uh, has been proved by uh, Michel Struve in 1984, uh, 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 and then uh, for for the Yamabe problem and the Yamabe type problems. But so the same kind of decomposition also uh, can also be uh, proved here for our equation, and then we proved that actually you can decompose if you have a U epsilon blowing up solution. So first, there is two difficulty, difficulties here. There are two, two cases. <clears throat> first, there is a case where your epsilon converge weakly to, to a solution, to, to a function, and this function will be a weak solution and by regularity will be a, will be a solution. And there is another case <clears throat> where you converge weakly to zero. So I will only concentrate on the case um, uh, where the convergence has a, a zero weak limit the other case also can be treated similarly. In the paper, we also uh, treated both cases. But let me just concentrate on the case where u epsilon converge weakly to zero and um, emphasize the differences 
between the blow up picture on the sphere and the blow up picture on the half sphere. In particular, we have seen that on the sphere, there is no non simple blow up. And we will see that on the, on the half sphere, there are situations where you can, uh, you, you do have simple blow up and actually you can construct simple blow up. So the first, <clears throat> the starting point is that your, this is a Struve energy decomposition. So you can decompose your, your epsilon into some, some of bubbles sitting in the interior and some of bubbles sitting on the boundary plus some error term, which is very small in the H1 norm. <clears throat> and so now uh, let me uh, fix this uh, terminology. So AI I call, are called concentration points. So they are not blow up points because this concentration point may converge to the same blow up point. So you remember. And then lambda i is called the speed of the, of the, of the concentration. And then there is another uh, interesting quantity, which we call epsilon ij. This is the mutual interaction between two bubbles. And what we can prove that this interaction is always uh, very weak, it goes to zero. So, <clears throat> <laughs> now what happens? First, let us um, look to, uh, to what happens for the um, interior uh, blow up point. So interior blow up point will converge to a critical point of K with Laplace uh, strictly uh, negative. So this is the same situation like in the sphere, like also in the half sphere for the low dimension. <clears throat> and uh, what we can also prove is that there is um, there is there is a, a, a an estimate of the height of the of the of the speed. So the speed here, the speed lambda i behaves like. I'm sorry. Uh, let me. Uh, so I'm I'm not. So this uh, I'm not able now to to write. I don't know why. So and anyway, this the lambda i will behave like one over the square root of epsilon. Because this is positive, so the Laplace is negative, so this is positive. So this is a constant, and so the height will be one over the square root of epsilon. And then uh, you can also prove that at every um, at at every uh, blow up point, there is only one sequence converging there. So it is really isolated simple. So here you get the same situation as uh, what you uh, get for the uh, for the uh, for the closed case. So this is the situation. Now, what happens for the boundary blow up point? So boundary blow up point will converge to critical point of the restriction of K on the boundary, and they will satisfy that it is, uh, 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 the, that the normal derivative now is positive. And uh, also there is something interesting here. Now the height is different because here you can, here, lambda i now behaves like one of epsilon. Before we get uh, lambda i behaves like one of the square root of epsilon. So because of this difference of, of behavior of the, of the rate of a concentration, uh, one uh, is able to prove that in some situation, you will have, um, uh, you will have non simple blow up. But then uh, let us um, study further this uh, blow up point and uh, look to their uh, nature. <laughs> so if you have a, now, a blow up uh, point, a boundary, a boundary blow up point, then, uh, and, the, uh, and then this means that you have at least one concentration point converging there. Then you look to, the, to, 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 the, uh, to this expression here, lambda i, so the height of the, the, the speed of the concentration times the distance. So if this is uniformly bounded, then you can prove that it is an isolated simple. If this is not bounded, then you can prove that it is not isolated simple, that there exist at least two concentration uh, points, concentration sequences converging to the same point. So this is a first, uh, uh, um, a two alternative. So either you have this one here and then you, it is uh, simple, or you, don't, you do not have it until it is not simple. But we want to understand more. So this is only a kind of, a, of two alternative. So, so is it possible that you, 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 we, we do have this alternative? Yes, but for this, we need uh, uh, actually to understand more about this uh, non blow up point. And actually to understand the nature of, uh, 
of a boundary blower point with respect to the uh, simpletness and non simpletness we uh, make use of uh, some Hamilton function, so uh, sometimes called also Kirchhoff rot uh, type functional. Um, and this function is quite, um, this is what you find if, for example, you are looking for the location of vortices in the, the Euler equation, or if you, if you look to the concentration point in the mean field equation. <clears throat> and then it is very surprising that something similar so, some, some, some family of the same type also arises to uh, understand the uh, non-simple blow-up behavior in this Yamabe type problems, in the Niramak problem. So this function here is uh, defined on the, <coughs> on the configuration space of the tangent. So you take a point on the, on, on, on the, on the boundary and you take the tangent space and you consider the, the, the configuration space of order M. So this means all the point Xi, Xj, so that Xi is not equal to Xj. And then you define your function to be one half of the Haitian matrix of K1 applied to Xi, Xi, plus some kind of Coulomb, Coulomb uh, potential. So it's, it's very surprising that this, this physical quantity here uh, arises in a pure geometric context. So what is the relation between this uh, uh, Hamilton function and your uh, non-simple blow-up? So if you assume that you have more than, you have non-simple blow-up uh, situation, so you have a point which is non-simple blow-up, which means that you have more than one uh, sequence converging there, then you can rescale. So what you do is that you rescale the distance of AI, ZI, times one of epsilon, and if you rescale it, they will converge to critical point of this function here. <clears throat> so in particular, if you know that uh, there is no, that this function here does not have any critical point, then you can uh, rule out non-simple blob. And if you know that it does have critical point, then you can try to construct also uh, different sequences converging uh, on the, to the same point. And uh, so this is not, not uh, the, 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 the whole story. The whole story is that uh, actually our aim <coughs> is to analyze uh, this problem from a very a variational viewpoint. And for the variational viewpoint, you would like to uh, understand the contribution, topological contribution of blowing up solution to the difference of topology between the level set of the function. And, and like in Morse theory, and like in any extended Morse theory, uh, what <coughs> plays here a role is the Morse index of this solution. So this solution here will, um, will attach, when you cross some kind of a critical level, you have to attach a handle of dimension the Morse index. And, and, and actually what is here surprising is that we can, we can also uh, um, compute it here. So for the interval point, uh, for, for a boundary blower point, which is uh, isolated simple, you can compute it. And this is M minus one plus the sum of the core index of K1 at A1. So A1 are the critical point. And then, and then uh, you, uh, you, you uh, look to, the, to, the, to, the, uh, to their core index. If you have now non-simple blow up point, then you have, you have to change your K1 by FZM. So this function here, so it appears because we did this scaling, but actually this is more, uh, this is more relevant because if you want to compute the topology, then you have to use it to, to, to use this function here. So it is, it is really, it is uh, inherent to the, to, to the problem. So this is something which is, uh, Canonical defined by, by this problem here. Now, the next question is, uh, what about the critical point of this function? Okay, so this function may have or may not have critical point. And so let, let me here <coughs> point out some, some, some simple situation. <clears throat> so if, uh, if your Z is a local minimum of the function K1, then you can prove that you have always uh, a minimum that the function has always a minimum. So if now Z is a local maximum, you can prove that the function does not have any critical point. So this means that you have, if you have a local maximum, 
you cannot build there more than one bar. So this means that every local maximum of K1 is a simple blow up. <clears throat> and now you can also give a condition on the Hessian matrix so that you have a critical point and even a, a non digit critical point. So this is the situation of, of, of this function here. And now let us um, look to the, uh, to the situation in the, in, the other, in the other direction. Uh, we proved now there are some possibilities to have non-simple blow up, but these are the alternatives. Now we want to, to, to say that actually you can construct non-simple blow up. <clears throat> and um, I, I gave you three, uh, three um, type of this construction here. In the paper, we, we gave actually all the construction because uh, uh, from one part, we uh, perform a blow up analysis to see all the situation. And actually for each situation, we prove that actually this, uh, there is a construction. This, uh, they, they all occur. This alternative only, only can occur always can occur. <clears throat> so if you take now a function k, which is a positive, um, and you take n bigger than or equal to five, so this is very important, you take an n degenerate critical point of k1, which is not the local maximum, because we have seen that the local maxima, uh, for local maxima, the corresponding uh, Hamilton function does not have any critical point. So, so there you, you cannot construct any non-simple law. So there is, this is the first, first condition. The condition is that if you assume that the Hessian matrix has at least one simple positive eigenvalue, then you can uh, produce a solution of a P epsilon uh, concentrated at Z with, with the energy of two masses. This means that you have two sequences converging there. So, so this is the first situation. The, 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 the next situation is that you can now make an assumption on the function of the M. <coughs> so every time, so this is the first assumption, I don't, don't repeat them because this is a necessary assumption. So you take a, a, a critical point of, of K, which is a non, no, not a local maximum and satisfying this condition because other, otherwise you know that there is no concentration at this point here. <coughs> but if you have such a point where boundary blah point, where it might be that you have a concentration, then you look to this function here, this is this Hamilton function, FZM. If it has for some M, a non degenerate critical point, then you can construct there a solution uh, of a bubble with energy equal to M times the, the energy of the bubble, which means that for every M, you have m bubbles. So you, for m equal to two, you have two bubbles, m equal to three, you have three bubbles, and so on. And <laughs> so this is at one point. You can also combine it at many points here. So if, you have, if you have a situation where you have uh, many uh, critical points of K1, which are not local maxima, and such that also the normal derivative is positive. So these are all necessary conditions to have, to have a blow up. And then if, you, if uh, for every uh, zi, and uh, uh, there is a qi such that this Hamilton function here has a non critical point, then you can construct now a blowing up solution, which blows up at the point z1 Q, with q1 bubble, z2 with q2 bubble, and so on. So this means that you can combine all this kind of, of bubble. And also, this, this I didn't uh, <coughs> write here, uh, but also if you have, because here we assumed from the beginning that you uh, epsilon converges weakly to, uh, to zero. So if actually it converges weakly to a, a function omega, then this omega is a solution of the number problem. And then you, can, you, have, to, you have some kind of mixed bubble. You have omega plus some of, of bubbles, and these bubbles may, may, in all this situation, assuming this condition on the Hamilton function, may um, exhibit multiple bubble, uh, multiple bubbling at the same point. There is also something, the last uh, feature that also uh, I would like to emphasize. Actually, you can prove that there is a, um, there is a, a blowing up solution with infinite energy and infinite Morse index. 
So, <clears throat> and the, the condition is quite simple. So the, the, uh, there are these uh, necessary conditions. So I will not re repeat them. So you, you assume that you have an analysis of a particular point with uh, the normal derivative is positive. Now, if you assume that the Haitian matrix has only one positive eigenvalue and all the other are negative, then for every M, you can construct a solution which has uh, the energy of M bubble. And you can let his M go to plus infinity, then you get that the energy goes to plus infinity and the Mox index go, goes to plus infinity. <clears throat> and this is, this is a, a very specific situation because usually if you have blow up, so uh, you can, uh, for example, if you uh, think of Yamabe type equation or even on, on the Nuremberg problem on a closed uh, manifold, you can, you can say there is, there is a, a, a level such that I know that all bubbles are under this level here. Yeah? Because, uh, because you have that uh, all the uh, uh, bubbles occurs only at the critical point of K. K is a non critical point. So it has isolated critical um, uh, values. And then, and then, and then you have, you, and then if you know that you have a simple blob, then you, you, you have some kind of uniform energy bound. But now the problem is that, is that there is no, there, there is no non-simple blob. And depending on the condition that you put on, on K1, you can have a point where you can build arbitrarily many bubbles. And this means that uh, first, uh, there is no upper estimate of the energy of this bubbling solution, but also there is no upper estimate on the Morse indices, which means that this uh, blowing up solution may create more and more topology. And this makes the, the variational problems very, very, very delicate. So in the last maybe uh, two or three minutes, uh, I would like to explain the construction. So the strategy of the construction the strategy is, is not complicated, maybe somehow technical. So it's based on the yaponov schmidt reduction and uh, combine it with some, uh, uh, some refined expansion of the gradient in the neighborhood where you want to build this uh, multi-bubbling uh, solution. <clears throat> so let me, uh, in the next two or three minutes, uh, say something about it. So first, you know that your problem has a variational uh, structure. So <clears throat> solution are in one-to-one -one correspondence to critical point of the Euler Lagrange functional, which I've written here. And then <clears throat> what you do, is first you want to construct, so let me construct only something on the boundary. <laughs> so you want to construct, uh, let's say, M bubbles concentrated at the same point. So you take, you take, uh, you take uh, uh, now um, you, you, you define a, a manifold and this manifold has a parameter. Some of them are finite, some of them are infinite. And for the finite terms, so this alpha, lambda, uh, x, these are uh, really the parameter, lambda and x, this is a parameter of the bubble. So every bubble comes with a point, x, concentration point, and with a speed. And then this alpha, this is a gluing parameter, how it is possible to glue more than one power parameter. And now this v, this is in the, in the Stroube decomposition, this is the, the part, this is the remaining part, which is small in the h1 more that, that you have. And then you look to this, uh, situ uh, this, uh, this family where now you want to produce an unsimple blob. So for this first, you have to, uh, to know that all the points will converge to the same point. So this is, this is why the distance of this point here, xi and, uh, and xy, they converge to, to, to zero, but they converge to zero with some height. So this comes from the blow up analysis. You know that actually, if, if uh, that xi will and xj will both converge to z, but <coughs> their distance will be comparable to epsilon at the power of n plus two divided by n. So, and, and now you want to construct a critical point <coughs> with this, uh, with this uh, property that in this set here, and that what you do here first, um, so you have to look to the tangent space uh, you have to look to the tangent space and now to, to define a, a new function, <coughs> which is e epsilon, the sum of alpha i delta i plus v, 
when now V is orthogonal to the kernel of your, uh, to, to, to the tangent space. This is orthogonal to the tangent space. And once you do that here, so you have first to, to um, minimize with to V. So this is exactly what you do in the, in the, the classical Japan of Schmidt uh, reduction. So you have to have a finite uh, re reduction. And for this, you need you need to uh, okay if, if, first uh, first you, you you would like to have a solution so if you have a solution with this constraint because v now is orthogonal to the to the tangent space <coughs> you you will have um, also uh, also some um, uh, lagrange multiplier so this is bi ai and ci so so you write your equation because now every critical point of your, uh, your function will be a critical point of the function cf in the variable alpha i, lambda i, c i, and v. And then now you start with this one here, the, the infinite dimensional part. So this you can solve it because, because uh, the second variation is, uh, is, a, is a, uh, because the, the linear operator is invertible uh, on the orthogonal of, of this space here. So this, uh, you, you can find the solution and you can, you can also find uh, an estimate of the solution. So this solution will be le less than constant time epsilon. And now you are left with a, a finite dimensional system. And for this, you expand the gradient. This is uh, what, what I said in the beginning. You expand the gradient in this set here. <clears throat> and if you expand it here, you see that here alpha i, this is a one critical point, which is given exactly by, by, by this one here, kx equal to this one here equal to zero. <laughs> and, then, <clears throat> and then you look to all, all the situation and here, the most important things here, and this is the difference because this you can also do it on the on the sphere. So, and you would ask me what what is the difference? The difference is exactly here. This situation here, on the boundary here, uh, makes that it is possible to construct uh, these uh, points which are very close to each other and converge to the same point. And then uh, now you uh, make a change of variable, uh, and once you make a change of variable, your system now is equivalent to a very nice system as a beta i is equal to big O of epsilon log epsilon. Lambda i is a big O of epsilon at the power of n minus four divided by n. The um, Hessian equation, uh, the, 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 the Hessian at the point is a, a big O of epsilon square plus eta square plus epsilon square. So, and this is an addition rate. So this, you can, you can see it as actually the norm of the psi is bigger than, smaller than this one here. And this is a typical situation when you can, where, where you can apply the Brouwer fixed point theorem and you have, you find the solution. So this is, a, this is the strategy of, of, of the proof um, roughly um, um, explained. So uh, my time is um, over. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, Omedin, thank you very much for this very inspiring talk.